Hi guys, welcome back to the Edge of the Lawn Garden. Wanted to talk to you today about the insects that I have in the garden right now. We are talking about um, early May. It's starting to get really warm and insect populations are increasing in a drastic way. So these are the insects that I'm dealing with right now. The black clusters that you see inside of this um, this bud of the mangold are actually aphids. Sorry about the wind. In the nut house as well, on the peppers. If you look closely, on the leaves on the buds and on the stem you'll see aphids followed by ants. Now treating the aphids themselves is very easy. They are very fragile insect, soft body, uh, you can actually spray them down with a water hose and they'll drastically decline in numbers or if you use uh, soapy water or any other um, mineral product it will probably kill them problem is that if you have ants with the aphids the ants will take the aphids from one place of the garden take them to the other and so and so because the ants are actually grooming the aphids so they could uh, eat the honeydew that they extract therefore if you have aphids and you have ants treat the ants then treat the aphids my solution for the ants problem lies in those tiny boxes that I put over here. These are bait, bait box made from borax, bit of sugar and tiny bit of water. What happened is that, um, sorry about the wind, what happened is that the ants are looking around they can find those holes in the side of the box, they gain inside, they find the bait, they eat it, they take it back to the nest, they feed the brood, they feed the queen, eventually after several weeks most of the, the ants will die and you'll see them as well, clusters of dead ants inside of the box. Now you have to spread multiple uh, baits like this around the around the garden and you have to change the bait inside it will not completely solve the ants problem but it will drastically remove them from being a major uh, aphid carrier pest next pest we have leaf borrower as you can see over here you can see it here as well and this is a kidney leaf as well now, the best way to control it is sanitation, removing infected leaves and yellow stick traps, traps that attract the fly of the leaf borrower and actually get him stuck, this way re reducing dramatically the infection in the garden. Now the pests that is ravaging my uh, acorn squash are actually tiny, barely visible to the naked eye and these are spider mites damage and if you look on the underside of the leaves you might barely see those dusty spots that are the spider mites now spider mites are a bit of an issue in dry and harried areas like mine and in direct sun they are not an issue that much but um, this zucchini is located half shaded during the day by the house therefore um, the mites attacked it to manage the mites what I do is I'll uh, put a sprinkler around here the moisture will prevent the eggs to hatch and the adults will flee away for uh, some other place. If you have uh, this problem in uh, pots that can be moved 
like these tomatoes over here. You can take them and move them to a brighter place, which is probably what I'm gonna do. Now, if you have uh, brassicas, like this Brussels sprout over here, slugs and snails might still be a bit of a problem. Um, but for me, this is uh, something that I do not worry so much about it because I'm more interested of the um, sprouts themselves. Now, my biggest concern in the following month would be probably the white flies because uh, once June comes, comes a massive increase in the white fly population, and the white flies are uh, transmitting some of the worst viruses for um, tomatoes and other crops. Therefore, in this tomato patch, I already put uh, three sticky tapes that I found them very, very useful. If you focus closely, you can see those white spots that are actually the white flies themselves. And I found that um, a sticky trap for uh, one sticky trap for each uh, location between two plants is very effective when reducing the amount of uh, white fly infestation. Other than this, I'm glad to say that uh, some of the tomatoes that I was wearing in the previous video that are not bearing fruit started bearing fruit. This is the Cherokee, pur Cherokee Purple and this is the Black from Tula looking really nice. The beefsteak tomatoes are showing some nice size over here and over there as well. The liquor pen variety they have over here a uh, neighbor suggested that it might be um, black cream because of the mm -hmm. green shoulders and this is uh, my oxar tomato this is the black cherry and the red pear tomato that uh, in the previous video had, had some issues of wilting is looking far better and it's even bearing nice fruits over here so that's about it for today I hope you enjoyed this video and Hope you will comment if uh, you find this information useful. Anyway, have a great day guys and I hope to see you later. Bye bye.